How did the architecture change in the late Roman Empire? How did the style and features of buildings built in and after the 4th century AD differ from buildings built in the earlier Roman Empire? As we shall see during the course of this video, the architecture of the Roman Empire did indeed change profoundly in many ways from 300 to 600 AD, with lasting impact on the urban landscapes of the big cities of the late Roman Empire. Constantinople, Rome, Mediolanum or others changed quite a lot in late antiquity. We will find many new building styles and elements, but also many familiar ones. Let us then try to understand how architecture changed in the late Roman Empire. When we think of Roman architecture, we think of giant impressive buildings with many columns. First and foremost, of course, the grand temples that were built for hundreds of years throughout the Roman Empire. Or we think of the many amphitheaters, such as the Amphitheatrum Flavium, better known as the Colosseum, where gladiators fought each other, but where also other events took place. Or we think about the giant circuses, where chariot races took place, or of the imperial palaces, or of course of the giant bathing complexes. But in the late Roman Empire, that is the time from around the year 300 to around the early 600s AD, architecture would start changing quite profoundly. The first reason for why architecture changed was of course the rising importance of Christianity and an increased church building activity. With the toleration of Christianity, but later even more so after Christianity became the state religion of the Roman Empire in 384 AD, we would of course witness more and more Christian basilicas and churches constructed. And since Christianity was in many ways antithetical to the Greco-Roman religion, the early Christian architects hence wanted to signify this profound departure from the old traditions by using a different architectural style. But architecture also changed because of the many calamities that the Roman Empire had to endure starting with the crisis of the 3rd century. Now suddenly fortresses and walled cities became more important and hence the architecture sometimes became more simplistic and more functional because of the necessity for faster and more efficient construction. But of course, cultural transformation and experimentation with new styles also played a role. People just want to try out new things and hence it is pretty obvious that the styles of buildings will always change even if it is the same culture building them. The last buildings of the old traditional Roman style were constructed in the 300s AD. We had the last grandiose classical Roman buildings constructed in Rome by the Emperor Maxentius who was actually one of the most prolific builders in Roman history and this at a time not long after the crisis of the 3rd century which is quite remarkable. He built the Basilica of Maxentius, sometimes also called Basilica Nova, a truly gargantuan building, part of which survives to this day, but unfortunately the larger part was destroyed in several earthquakes. I made a video by the way about the earthquakes that destroyed ancient Rome during the course of the centuries. A basilica was a rectangular building with a large central open space and often a raised apse at the far end from the entrance. Basilica served a variety of functions, including a combination of a courthouse, council chamber or meeting hall. The Christians took over the form of the basilica and as we shall see many of the early Christian places of worship were based on the form of the basilica. But Maxentius also built the temple of Romulus, not far from his large basilica dedicated to his young son Romulus. Outside of Rome he built a large circus that was almost as long as the Circus Maximus and nearby his family tomb. These buildings still contained the known elements of the classical style. It was now during the 4th century that we would see more and more Christian basilicas built and naturally they departed from the classical Greco-Roman architecture. Although of course sometimes they incorporated some aspects of the old Roman temples. The old St. Peter's Basilica that was started on the Constantine is such an example of an early Christian basilica. It was completed in around 360 AD and here we can already impressively see the departure from the classical Greco-Roman temple architecture. It had the form of an elongated basilica with a central nave and two smaller side naves on each side that were separated from each other with a multitude of columns. 
The greater simplicity and reduced exterior splendor is immediately apparent and this was intentional as to symbolize the modest nature of the Christian God and to distance themselves from the Greco-Roman architecture. The interior was also much more simplistic and gone were now the days where the deity was worshipped in form of a giant statue such as the famous one of Zeus at Olympia or of Jupiter in the temple of Jupiter on the Capitoline Hill. In general, the Christian architecture was much more simplistic, but the use of many Corinthian columns also still shows a strong adherence to old classical architectural elements and to the classical form of the basilica itself. So some elements were taken from the old architectural style and some were changed. The Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore is another fascinating example of an early Christian basilica, completed around 430 AD. In this basilica we can see impressive mosaics which would now slowly become the dominant form of artistic expression as opposed to the classical temples in which statues were the dominant form of artistic expression. San Stefano Rotondo is another interesting example of an early Christian basilica, one which is interesting for its departure from the regular basilica shape. It was probably completed sometime around 460 AD and is notable for its fascinating round interior space and the classical Doric columns arranged in circular fashion. On the outside we also see quite impressively the circular shape and the more simplistic form that came to dominate early Christian architecture. The courtyard is especially fascinating because we can see exterior mosaics and we can see an architectural style that one could almost call Byzantine in some aspects. And indeed, what we call Byzantine architecture is just a natural evolution of late Roman architecture. And in fact, in the 450s AD, when the Western Empire still existed, you would sometimes have not seen a difference in architectural styles between the West and the East. These styles began diverging later. And if you want to learn more about Roman architecture than I could possibly cover in this video, there is an incredibly well done series about exactly that topic on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is hands down the best platform if you want to see high quality documentaries about a huge variety of many different topics from physics and astronomy to history to nature, geography and so much more. I've had a subscription myself on CuriosityStream for a while now, especially because of the excellent documentaries about Roman history and lately I have watched the excellent series called Roman Megastructures. There you see how the cities of Arelate or Lugdunum looked in their prime and what impressive buildings these cities boasted with excellently done 3D reconstructions. There are just thousands of high quality documentaries on CuriosityStream including many award winning exclusives and originals. So no matter what you are interested in, whether it's history, nature, travel, food or space and technology, you will find your favorite shows on CuriosityStream. And the best thing is, you can watch all the shows anytime, anywhere and from any device you like, smart TV, PC, smartphone or tablet. It's simple, just go to curiositystream.com slash Majorianus or scan the QR code for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And for fans of this channel, use the promo code Majorianus and you will save 25% off. It's already one of the most affordable and best deals in streaming. So click the link below in the description or go to curiositystream.com slash Majorianus and save 25% right now. And by doing that, you on top also support this channel and help to end misconceptions about the late Roman Empire. Gratias Tibiago Amici. So back to late Roman architecture. We thus saw that the early Christian art style had a profound impact on late Roman architecture. After the infamous Edict of Theodosius, no new classical Greco-Roman temples were built anymore in the entire Roman Empire. Quite the contrary, some were unfortunately even destroyed by the fanaticism of some early Christian church fathers. Thus, while the old temples were closed and no new ones were built, Many new Christian churches were built and consequently the urban landscape also began to visibly change in the late 300s but especially in the 400s AD in the big cities of the empire. Logically, the old Roman amphitheaters were also not built anymore. 
the profound cultural shift towards Christianity that took place in the 4th and 5th centuries AD not only rang the death knell for the old Greco-Roman temples, but also for the old amphitheaters. Since gladiatorial games were outlawed, which I have to say is one of the big positive impacts of Christianity, these giant arenas of brutal mass spectacle and death were not built anymore. But also the old semi-circular amphitheaters, where theater plays were performed, were not built anymore, since Christian culture often viewed theater as profane and in a very negative light. The same was of course the case for the ancient bathing houses. In Rome, not a single new bathing complex was built after the one of Diocletian, which was finished in the early 300s AD. This is the last classical Greco-Roman style bathing complex built in Rome. Even the baths of Constantinople all date from the mid-4th century at the latest. The famous baths of Zeuxippus, for instance, were already built in the 2nd century AD. However, ceremonial bathing places for baptism, so-called baptismals, were built in and after the 5th century, and they are quite fascinating as they show an incredibly rich decoration with very elaborate mosaics. Here we can see again the shift towards mosaics as the dominant form of art in the late Roman Empire, which would slowly replace statues as the dominant form of artistic expression and decoration. Indeed, with the closing of the old Greco-Roman temples, many Romans themselves became at some point in the late 5th and early 6th centuries so estranged with the old temples as to even believe that the old statues were inhabited by demons, thus shunning the old places of worship and often having even a hostile attitude towards them. Another fascinating change was that slowly the porticated street started becoming much more popular which is of course clear, because the religious processions became much more abundant with the rise of Christianity, meaning processions where ancient relics of martyrs were displayed and carried, but also for instance when an emperor triumphantly entered the city, as this would now have a semi-religious undertone, almost always accompanied by Christian priests. Hence, many porticated streets were built. This trend started already in the mid-300s and lasted well into the late 6th century. The most famous example of course is the famous Mese in Constantinople. Such a long colonnaded street was unknown in earlier centuries of the Roman Empire when the central forum was the meeting place and also often served the function as central marketplace. But now the colonnaded street would serve both the function of meeting place for triumphal processions and for shops and markets. Another such fascinating example of a colonnaded street could be found at Antioch, but unfortunately that street is not preserved anymore. But also in the west, the colonnaded street became a huge trend, and archaeological excavations have shown that such a street was built at the Campus Martius in Rome under the western emperors Valentinian I and Gratian. The same picture at Mediolanum, modern day Milan where the Via Romana was beautified with impressive colonnaded porticos on each side leading all the way through the city, from the city gates, past the Basilica Apostolorum of Ambrosius, to the Triumphal Arch. Now when the Western Empire fell in late 400s AD, we might think that Roman architecture just vanished, but of course viewers of this channel know that this is untrue. For instance, the church of San Vitale in Ravenna was built after the Western Roman Empire officially fell. Groundbreaking started in 527 AD and it was finished some 20 years later and it looks remarkably similar to San Stefano Rotondo or churches from 70 years earlier of the Western Roman Empire on the outside. In the Eastern Roman Empire, we would see the construction of the impressive church of the Holy Apostles that was already started under Constantine himself. However, this church was destroyed and Justinian built a new one around 550 AD. Here we would see cupolas being employed in a very impressive way, the same style that was employed for the Hagia Sophia, possibly the most impressive Christian church building ever constructed. But here we can see still very distinct Roman architectural elements. The large spaces and the columns could have also been found in the Basilica of Maxentius, which had a non-religious function or the exterior round windows and simplistic facade style. We can therefore see what a slow and natural evolution Roman architecture underwent. Some forms were given up, such as the classical temples, 
or the amphitheaters or the baths. But some elements, such as elaborate columns or the form of the basilica, were kept and evolved over hundreds of years into what we would nowadays call Byzantine architecture. For that was the continuation of late Roman architecture. Even in the later Eastern Roman Empire after the 600s, we can still see clear late Roman elements. And I think that had the Western Empire survived, we would possibly also see lots of later churches that would have had very similar architectural features. I think a surviving Western Roman Empire in the 6th or later centuries would have also looked very Byzantine. Thus, architecture in the late Roman Empire underwent a slow transformation, initiated by strong cultural shifts, and this architectural style survived the centuries well into the late Byzantine Empire. And even these 14th century Eastern Roman churches still feature many elements that were already present in the Western Roman Empire almost a thousand years earlier. And please like and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And please consider supporting my work on Patreon or via a YouTube membership, because the long-term sustainability of this channel really depends on your support. This channel would not work without our amazing Patreon and YouTube members, and I would like to thank each and everyone who is supporting this channel in any way. Gratias tibi agua miki. And if you want to learn how Rome itself would have looked shortly after the fall, you can watch this video in the upper right corner. But if you are more interested in learning about how Byzantium would have looked before it became Constantinople, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias Tibiago and bene valete.